Okay, let's do one more. We're going to do one that has to do with uh, natural logs. Again, we're finding all the same information. First thing, we want to find increase and decreasing, and also critical numbers, and any kind of a local extrema. So we need to take the derivative. Since it's a natural log, we want to use the formula u primed over u. The u is 5 minus x squared, so that's going to go on the bottom. On top, we're going to have the derivative of 5 minus x squared, which is going to be negative 2x. Okay, now we have to look at what numbers are going to make the derivative undefined, and that's where you're going to be dividing by 0. If we set the bottom one equal to 0, we're going to get plus or minus root 5. Now, if I take uh, root 5 and put it back into here, I'm going to get ln of 0. And what that means is that it's not defined on the original one either, so I'm not going to find any critical numbers uh, for setting the bottom equal to 0 because the, the numbers I got, the answers, they're not defined on the original function, so they're not going to be critical numbers. The other way to find critical numbers is where you take the first derivative, set it equal to 0. Okay, so 0 equals negative 2x over negative 5x squared. 5x squared. So when we do this, um, we're going to cross multiply on that one in order to solve. Okay, so cross multiplying is going to give us, let me write this over 1, we're going to get negative 2x equals 0. And if we divide both sides by negative 2, then we're going to get 0 as a critical number. So now we're ready to take this and put it onto our number line. But before we do that, we have to determine what the domain of this one is. Natural logs have certain domains, and we have to figure out what the starting and ending points are, where those endpoints are going to be, because then I'll know what type of numbers to put in for my test numbers. Okay, so I want to find the domain. Now, how do we find domain of natural logs? Okay, this is a review of pre-calculus. You're going to take whatever is inside here, and you're going to set it to be greater than zero. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, five minus x squared, it's going to be greater than zero. Now, this right here, if I set it equal to zero, I'm going to get plus or minus root five. Now, let's think about what values in here are going to allow us to get a number greater than zero. Well, if I put radical five, square root of five in here, I will get zero exactly. But let's say I pick something bigger than square root of five. Square root of five is about 2.25, so what if I try three? Well, if I put three in here, I'm going to get a negative number, and that works also if I put positive 3 and negative 3, I'm still going to get a re uh, negative result for this. So what's going to happen is my domain for this one is going to be all the numbers between negative root 5 and root 5. If I pick something bigger than root 5 or less than negative squared root uh, 5, I'm going to get negative number, and we know we can't have negative numbers inside a natural log. I'm also putting parentheses around these because I'm not allowed to actually take the natural log of zero. Zero is not included either. So therefore, these are the numbers I got to put on my table. So here's what it looks like. Here's my number line. I've got stopped here, negative root five, and root five over here. And in the middle, I have zero. So I'm going to pick a test number in here. I'm going to put it into this, put it into the first derivative. Okay, so uh, I'll pick something in between here. I'm going to use negative 1 and 1 as my two test numbers. Something in between these. Again, these are about 2.25, so these are the test numbers I'll use. I'm going to put these into the first derivative. Let's start with negative 1. If I put negative 1 in here, I'm going to get a positive. If I put negative 1 inside there, I also get a positive, which means I'll get a plus for that region. Then we'll put 1 in here. 1 on top, I get negative 2 over a positive on the bottom, so I get a negative there. So as a result of all this, now I can tell some information. I can tell what my increasing decreasing is going to be. So first I have increasing. Increasing is going to be from negative root 5 to 0. And then my decreasing is going to be from 0 to square root of 5. So that's the information I was able to find from using the first derivative test. I can find the increase and decreasing, and also plus minus. First derivative test tells us that there's going to be a relative max at zero. Okay, so relative max, relative or local max, is going to occur at zero. Now, if I put zero into the original one, remember you got to use original to get the relative max. 
you're gonna get natural log of five left over, and that's gonna be it. So now I have this piece of information. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find the second derivative so we can find the concavity and also if there's any inflection points. So I'm gonna erase this, keeping in mind that our domain is still between negative root five and root five. And I wanna take the derivative of this. Now I'm gonna do that up here because this requires us to use quotient rule. Okay, so when I do the second derivative, I have the, the bottom thing, it's five minus x squared, times the derivative of the top, which is negative two, and we have minus here, minus in that formula, minus the top thing, negative two x, times the derivative of the bottom, that's also gonna be negative two x. So I end up getting three negatives here in a row, all over the bottom squared. So the whole quantity and the bottom will be squared there. I wanna do some simplifying. Okay, so I'm gonna get negative 10 plus 2x squared. Three negatives is, is a negative, and you're gonna get 4x squared as a result. And then this, I'm not gonna expand this at all, I'm just gonna leave it in that form. The last thing we can do is do a little simplifying step, and I'll just do that over here to get our final answer for the second derivative. When we clean that up, we're gonna get negative 2x squared minus 10 over five minus x squared squared, and if you want to do a factoring step on that, you could do that also, um, but basically that's going to be our second derivative. Now, let's take a look at that and see if we can find any possible numbers to put on our number line for the second derivative. We have the same numbers as before. We know that negative root five and root five will cause this to be undefined, but again, that's not defined on the original one, so we don't need to worry about that. The second thing is we're going to take that, set it equal to zero. So if we set it equal to zero, whenever you have a fraction like this, the shortcut way, instead of doing the cross multiplying, the simplest way to do that is just simply take the top and set it equal to zero because we know with fractions, zero divided by anything is gonna be zero. Okay, so we're gonna set that equal to zero. Uh, we're going to add 10 to both sides, divide by negative two. Okay, now we get x squared is equal to negative five. We can't uh, get a real answer for that. So that's going to give us a measure number. So therefore, there's not going to be any points uh, that we're going to put on our number line except for negative root 5 and root 5. So let's do that up here. Okay, so we have negative root 5 and over here we have root 5. That's going to be it. There's no other numbers that we found by setting that equal to zero or where the second derivative is undefined. So therefore, we just gotta pick any number now between negative root five and root five. Remember, we still gotta use the second derivative. Let's use zero, that's the easiest one to try. If we put zero into the second derivative, we get negative 10 on top, and that's gonna be a positive on the bottom, because it's squared. Therefore, we get a minus. Now what is that gonna tell us? That tells us that between the entire interval, it's gonna be concave down. Okay, so first of all, concave up is gonna be none. Okay, there's no concave up at all because there's no pluses anywhere here. And then we have concave down, and concave down is gonna be between negative root five and root five. So that whole entire interval, that's where it's gonna be concave down. Inflection points, none in this case because there's no change in concavity at all, and there's no other number we saw inside here. It's negative all the way down. So therefore, we can say no inflection points. Okay, now that we have all this information complete, I'm gonna uh, clear all this out so that we can do the graph. Here's the information we already found. Now, the other thing we wanna find before we do the graph, we should do intercepts. This right here is a relative max, but we also notice that that's gonna be a y-intercept. It's gonna be good to find the x-intercepts. So let me do that over here so we have some more space. X-intercept is where y is equal to zero. So we have zero equals natural log five minus x squared. Now, we wanna solve this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, there's not really a name for this. Take the e of both sides maybe, I'm not sure but you're making E down here as a base and then you're forming this as an exponent. So we're doing that because that way we can cancel out the national log. 
e to the zero is one, e and ln is gonna cancel out and you're gonna get five minus x squared. So now we just gotta solve that equation, that's gonna give us our x-intercepts. Uh, subtract negative four equals negative x squared. When we divide by negative and square root everything, you're gonna get plus or minus two uh, for your x-intercepts. So I'm gonna add that over here. X-intercepts are gonna be two comma zero and negative two comma zero. Those are our two x-intercepts. These are two other points that we're gonna have on our line. Now, as far as graphing is concerned, natural log of five, if we put that into a calculator, that's gonna be about 1.6, and that's gonna help us now to put everything all on the graph. So let's make a sketch of what's happening here. So I'm gonna plot these points. I have zero and about 1.6, so about right there. It's also gonna go through two and negative two. Okay, now what about our domain? Our domain before we said was, go ahead and rewrite that here, your domain was negative root five to root five. What does that mean as far as natural log is concerned? Well, natural logs we know normally have vertical asymptotes. That's exactly what happens here at negative root five and root five. So again, we know this is about 2.2 approximately, so a little bit past two, we're gonna have some vertical asymptotes. Again, we know that because regular natural log, if you didn't have the x squared in it, normally you'd have a vertical asymptote there. In this case, because you have the square there, we end up forming two vertical asymptotes. So what'll happen is it's gonna be increasing from negative root five. So again, the graph does not exist after these points here because the domain is only between these two dotted lines. It's gonna be increasing all the way up to zero, which means it's gonna to have to come up here, hit that point, it's gonna go there. We have a relative max, so that means the slope of the line is gonna be zero, so it means it's gonna bend and come back down again. And that makes sense because you have decreasing. Also what I know is it's concave down, so it makes sense that it's gonna be curving down all the way through for the entire one. Now in the notes, because of technology, it, uh, the it doesn't display this going down far enough and your graphing calculator does the same thing. It's gonna show the graph stopping here, but it actually does not stop. It should keep going down all the way to negative infinity on both sides. So don't forget to put the arrows down there showing that the graph does continue uh, in both directions. Concave down for the whole thing. We have increasing and we have decreasing, our relative max. So all the information put together, you'll get that as your result.